Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys today as Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in MIC chat, does his weekly Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time webinar in which he talks about MIC strategies, market sentiment, gives examples of his weekly trades, and this is episode seven, and he's also going to focus on what is discipline in trading. And while this is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. Everyone always talks about discipline, right? Like the almighty discipline. What is it, right? You got to be disciplined, but like, it's such a vague idea, right? It's almost like edge. I don't like, I didn't used to like the term discipline. I didn't used to like the term edge because like, it, it's such a vast word it, with so many different possibilities of what it means that like, it's almost like, oh, stay disciplined. Well, that doesn't help me be red or green on the trade, right? Like I'm trying to make money, be disciplined. What does that mean? So I want to go in, go into it, what discipline actually means. So, okay, a little lag there. All right. So what we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the key traders and I kind of want to like, I want to change this to key traders rather than just key trades. Maybe it's just because it's a summer, like I'm having a hard time finding trades this week. Not the case. Like I found a, had a lot of trades this week for some reason, but like there's, I, I don't want to be one of those guru guys who talks about charts that they don't, um, that they don't trade, right? Oh yeah. Buy here, sell here. It's very easy. Can't you see on the chart behind me? Right? Like buy there. Um, but like th sometimes th there is stuff that I want to talk about. Like even if I don't trade it, maybe why I don't want to trade it or why, you know, like stuff like that, why I miss even. Let's get started. So uh, ATOS, I think, yeah, this one was today. Um, I traded this like a total, like, okay, this was a swear word, but I changed it to jerk. I traded this like a total jerk. And what I mean by that is I just kind of like, I kind of just threw like, I, I've, I've been kind of on a good streak where like, Trades have just been kind of working for me. So I just kind of took that for granted a little bit. So I just like, yeah, I can enter here pre-market right before the market. For those of you guys who know me, I don't typically like to do that. But the, um, what, I, what I was, um, what I did at the open was, um, I know ATOS is a pig, but I decided to go and look um, in the fundamentals just to see if there's anything new. If I haven't checked on a ticker in a long time, I like to go and check. And what I found was that the, um, that they, they have a lot of cash right now. And they um, like they did have they did have some warrants, I think at like 405, um, like high price warrants, but like their working capital was like $19 million or something, and their cash burn rate is like two million. So I'm like, they're not necessarily strapped for cash. It's not necessarily, I don't foresee like a huge uh, a huge dumpage going on at the open. I don't, I'm not like um S I'm not like anticipating that. So that's kind of my mindset. So that kind of shit, it's also like day one of the move. So I'm not really that stoked on the short. Um, uh, BPMX. So this one was a few days ago. Um, so this one was just a classic piggy short. It's not, it's out of my comfort for the price, uh, comfort zone. I say comfort. It's not that I'm uncomfortable with this range. I just don't like it. So I don't do it uh, very often, so it's uncomfortable because it's not something I typically do, but I mean, I'm certainly not uncomfortable with the risk. But um, uh, but yeah, Piggy Short, it's a, it's a classic Piggy Short. They had like $8 million to sell in their ATM. They, they pushed it, like they pushed it up here and I saw it was super heavy on the tape. And it, it, a lot of the times, like NBY is kind of an exception. Super, super cheap stocks don't often like to run a lot. Like they, they typically can't find the mojo. And honestly, I think this is because um, cheap stocks attract a lot of like $100 to $200 accounts, right? Like I, I, I think it, it, it attracts a lot of cheap names like with margin because they can get people 
the percentage people are drawn to the cheaper stock, that bigger percentage. I think somehow this kind of correlates to these never work out because they're, they're always full of like Robin hood traders. Right. Um, yeah. And so CETX was a good one. CETX was a, was a good one today. And this one was really funny because, um, I, I tried to get Joe to buy this with me. I tried. Um, we both, Joe, Joe pointed this out in chat and I was like, yes, yes, yes. And this is what I saw in this trade. So I, what I saw in this trade is exactly what Joe pointed out in chat. There's 430, 430 right here is a nice top where, especially when we get this slam here, short, this is a perfect risk level for shorts. People thinking it's lower high, the backside is in, right? The, uh, everyone thinks that the backside is in, it's simple stuff, right? Like it's, hey, here's a slam. And everyone thinks it's, it, it's over. And what, what tends to happen is when it doesn't continue to go, there's this domino effect here, as Joe's pointing out, right? There's 430 here, 450 is a whole and half dollar. I always count those, even if it's not on the chart as a recognized level, it's still a mental stop for everyone else. And then, so 450 and 460, these, it, I mean, and then we get another one over here, which is the level I decide to enter from. It's 410 because people who shorted down here are a lot of times they don't want to cover. And I know this from being a short seller, you don't want to cover into this perk here. You don't want to cover into these perks. You're going to wait for the perk to happen. You're going to wait for the stock to come down. And if it ever gets back above that perk, the secondary perk, that's where you're covering. This is so many shorts mentality. Um, so VVPR, what, what, what day was this? This was the 24th? Yeah, this was like three days ago. So you remembered me talking about last webinar. This is something I'm always working on, trying to improve my patience on my exits. Well, I definitely improved my patience. And you can see it worked out really well. Um, <laughs> I bought here at like 210. Um, and my goal was to sell from 260 to three. That's what I wanted, 260 to three. And so like I, I get up here and 240 is actually the first resistance um, on the daily chart. If you guys want to pull this, pull this chart up, VVPR had a huge day. VVPR had a huge day. And um, uh, actually, I can, now that I'm doing it this way, I can, I can, I can do this. VVPR had a huge day back over here. Um, and 240 was the first resistance. I remember keeping that in mind. Like, hey, 240 is a resistance. But there's no, like my, my, my thought process was there's no way this is going to hold. This is going to temporarily first resistance project, which is the kinds of trades that Bao likes to really take advantage. That's his first resistance strategy, right? The first time he gets to resistance, it's going to fail. Um, and so like it totally did. Like this is where like Bao shorting, right? So, but I was like, okay, I'm going to be patient and sit through the fail. I know it's going to fail, but I think it's going to come back, right? I think it's going to come back. And then like here, I'm getting really excited. And right over here, when we fail again is where I should have taken the trade off. I should have, um, XSPA, this was yesterday or two days ago, one of the two. Um, again, picking your moment, right? All day, like I missed this first move, but like I actually missed the second move too. <laughs> I, like this is, I woke up from a nap and I saw it right here. I woke up from a nap and I saw it right here and I didn't know what was going on and just kind of ripped. So, but like, this is when TWSTSHD, TW, TW, trademark something that should happen, doesn't. I'm just going to start abbreviating that because that took up way too much room. Trade when something that should happen doesn't. When this, like, and by the way, this is the key concept I want to go over for another trade. Um, when, when you, one thing I don't like to do is I don't like to dip buy off major, major, major squeezes, right? So off of something super major and vertical, like a huge squeeze, I don't like to dip buy that because um, my, 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 um, my idea for like the huge, like very vertical squeeze is that the, the only, like the reason why that's happening is because all the shorts are getting out at the same time. Right. So it's artificial demand. It's artificial. So yeah, the market sentiment, um, it's pretty bad. I think <laughs> we're like out of all of the market participants, like the big ones for the week, everything pretty much just tanked. really tough to be a longer in this kind of market. Um, really tough to be a longer, um, like all of these, I think were negative, like X, XSPA, 
was a pretty um, positive, like bullish until like it, today. Like yesterday, if, if I did the webinar yesterday, I would have talked how great X, XSPA was for the small cap market and as far as bullish sentiment, agreeing sentiment. But after today, when it like repriced that, when it repriced like, and, and just killed the mojo, like I, I, it turns into a net red. I think it has a negative effect on, on the overall small cap market. But yeah, whole lot of reds here. All these stocks just died. Um, all of these stocks, oh, I have CEPX two times and that's because it totally failed. So like you can almost get rid of that. Like BVPR I think was the only strongest, the strongest one and it still came down too, but it came down, I think, you know, these stocks are going to come down, but it didn't like tank on everybody, right? It came down like as everyone expected it to. These, these all just kind of just like failed. Anyway, so discipline, what is it? Um, discipline is not just stopping out when you're supposed to, right? Forcing yourself to enter. Uh, discipline is literally, the way I define discipline is, discipline is having the willpower. Discipline is having the willpower to only put yourself in situations that you were prepared for. And that's the best way that I can explain discipline. Because when, when you first enter trading and everyone says you got to be disciplined to, to be a successful, it's almost like, what does that mean? Like, do I only buy breakouts or, right? Like we all look for this kind of um, like these technical reasons for what, how we can apply discipline and discipline is not just stopping out when you're supposed to, it's forcing yourself to enter sometimes, right? If you have setups, right? If you have a setup, and you don't enter that setup because you're afraid. Discipline is when you allow anything besides robotic trading to enter your, your sphere, right? Sometimes if you're like, let's say that you're red three to four, three to four days of the week, right? You're, you're, you're red like four days of the week. And on the fifth day, you see a good setup, but you just don't want to lose anymore, right? Not entering that good setup is a way of breaking discipline that is that is a break of discipline when you don't force yourself to play your jacks or better hands because you're emotionally just drained right um not revenging is discipline right this is huge when when you're when like when you lose not to go double on the next trade right this is this is breaking discipline making you know not make i miss the trade like i let me chase let me all you know what like xspa ran let me just let me buy OPTT the next day, right? Like, because I missed that one. I'm not missing this one. That's a makeup trade, right? Not doing these trades, like anything that a, a robot wouldn't do is a break of discipline because you have to be, you have to be robotic to, with your own system. You have to follow your system. Not losing patience on a red streak or a green streak, right? It's very, sometimes when you're just on a red streak, like, you, like you're red, like two weeks in a row, and you're just like, man, like I've lost, I don't know, I lost $3,000 this week, man. I'm just going to go really big on this trade and make it all back, right? You can never, ever, ever, like not even once in this game can you ever say YOLO, right? Like if, if you're that type of person, you can't be a trader, right? Like this is why trading is so hard is because you, because you can't mess up once, like you can't allow yourself to mess like it's okay to mess up but you can't allow yourself one of these kind of mess ups once because you can get away with it but if you allow yourself to do it once you're going to allow yourself to do it again and it only like you can't enter a game like you can't enter a game where you'll win 99 percent of the time but if the one percent of the time you die like because eventually it will happen because it only takes one time right like like, and I, like, it's funny, like I was washing knives the other day and sometimes I have a bad habit of like washing, washing my knife with the front, like washing the blade side with, with my towel. And, I, and I'm like, I can't keep doing this. Like I, like, yes, I'm not, I'm not cutting myself, but it, it only takes once. Why would I do something that only takes once? Like eventually I'm going to cut myself. So it's kind of the same in trading. You just can't ever YOLO. Like the second you YOLO, like if you're the kind of guy who will YOLO every now and then, you're done. Like you might as well just not be a trader because I don't care if it's one year down the road, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, it's gonna happen and you're gonna lose, right? So you can't ever not even do it once. And as Joe likes to talk about, 
di like discipline is just saying just do it like like and I, and I get these pms too like where i'm having a really hard time i'm really like i i, I keep like i force a trade and like there's like honestly there's nothing that like Joe or or me or the bear or Alex or Val, there's nothing that we like we can tell you everything like the right stuff. It, you gotta just do it. Like you can't, you just gotta not make that trade, right? Just like there's not like I sometimes I try to give like like these metaphors for like why, but like there's at the end of the day that you just have to do it, right? Um ATOS traded this one breakdown and break even. It was under VWAP, broke. It was under VWAP, broke support, um, but consolidated too long at 250. How would you have traded this on the short side? I would have stopped out, um, stop out and re-enter on outer lines or just move on. I probably just would have did what Bear did and just moved on. Like I would have cut that and been like, I, I'll just I'll, I'll look to re-enter way later. But um, this kind of just tanked pretty fast. I probably would. I probably wouldn't have even I probably would have been mad if I was short and like this kind of tanked. I would have been wanting to see this over here and then like eventually short over here, but probably would have got mad. Um wouldn't want to be smart. Wouldn't it be smarter to do a market order if the stock is moving that fast? Um yes, I think I, I think this is in reference to like the candles when we were uh when I was talking about them. Uh yes, I think it's um better to do a market order. Um, I have hotkeys, so that's it's fastest for me to do that rather than like the the market order. But my 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 hotkeys are my get out keys are like plus five cents or something. So like I I typically get out. Like I've never had a problem getting out. If I did have a problem getting out, I'd probably um, switch it to like plus seven or plus ten. Um, uh, so it's pretty much the same as a market order. Um, is volume during that perk something you're looking at? Um, uh, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to ask that again because I don't know which stock you're talking about. Um, nice of you, thanks. Is that similar to what happened with ATOS? No demand. Yeah. Yeah. So I just went over that. Um, all right. All right. So now here we are to Jacob. Hey, awesome. What are your thoughts on shorting a death line pre market? Uh, uh, yeah, so a death line pre-market today on seal. I don't, I'm not super fond of it. Uh, I, I'm not super fond of it. Yeah, I mean, like, I just expect, oh yeah, like I definitely don't, like I, I especially don't like it if it's around the eight o'clock volume candle. Like I, you know, it's worth putting a trade on. I think if it's trade, like this was trading a lot of volume, but for me, I just, I, I wanted higher hopes on this. So like, I, I, I dismiss him. I typically dismiss him. If they I think they're worth a trade, but I don't think it's worth like a, a lot of risk on the trade. Um, that being said, I like for me, the better trade, right. The better trade was the, um, the better trade was the, um, the fantasy order short but the thing is is like if you, it's hard to chase weakness and it's hard to chase weakness in pre-market so when this does break the death line you, i kind of wait for a pop if i'm going to trade that at all and this really wasn't much of a pop you know so like that's it, it's hard for me to capture this kind of move um is a first resistance short viable on day one runners when there's a good strong resistance on the day yeah and that's what I consider um, front side shorts and front side covers. I definitely think there's, there's opportunity to short on day one. Um, but you shouldn't be short, like in my opinion, you shouldn't be shorting on day one looking to fade it. So that's, that's kind of the classic mentality that I like to have. Uh, a front side short should have a front side cover because a lot of the time to just hold trend. Ready, when, like really when it's a first assistant short, no, no, I think you could take it. I definitely think you can take it. You just got to be... Um, understanding of where your profit um, target should be and it should and it should be um, based like with the assumption that the stock's going to make a higher low and attempt to to break highs again ATOS 250 was a trap when price action behaves like that multiple ticks at a particular price does it usually mean weakness or strength excluding traps like ATOS 
The reason why I ask is because Bao says the more times the line gets tested like a bounce, the weaker each progressive test. Exactly. And that's exactly why the first, that's exactly why um, on, that's exactly why on the uh, VVPR trade that I took a couple of days ago, exactly on the VVPR trade that I took when I bought over here. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.